Next, let's look at the tolerable step potential. As we've seen previously, the step potential is caused by a voltage difference between a person's feet, which occurs when ground fault current flows through the ground underneath the person involved. The tolerable step potential is the maximum voltage that a person can withstand before they are put in any danger, and this depends on the weight of the person involved. For a person weighing 50 kilograms, this is the equation that we'll use. And for a person weighing 70 kilograms, this is the equation we use. As we can see, the only difference between the two equations is the value of the constant. With a person weighing 50 kilograms, able to withstand less voltage than the heavier person. As with the rest of the grounding system design, we always use the worst case scenario. So from this point forward, we will just use the step voltage calculation, which is applicable for the 50 kilogram person. We have three main parameters for this calculation. The first is CS, which is a surface layer derating factor that we've looked at previously. The next is rho S, which is the resistivity of the surface material in ohm meters. And finally, we have TS, which is the duration of the shock current in seconds. CS and rho S we know about. What about the duration of the shock current? Well, this is the maximum amount of time that a fault current will be in place. Most modern substations will detect and clear the fault very quickly, usually in one or two hundred milliseconds. But as usual, we take the worst case scenario and we normally use a TS value of one second, which gives us an error margin in case one of the protection system fails. As we can see from this equation, as the resistivity of the surface material increases, so does the tolerable step potential, which makes sense, as the surface is giving you more protection. What happens if we have no surface material? Well, CS becomes 1, as per the previous lecture. The surface resistivity value, rho S, will now become the resistivity of the soil, which will have a lot lower value, and therefore the tolerable step voltage will drop considerably. This makes sense. If there's no high resistivity surface material, then the substation becomes more hazardous, and you would expect the tolerable step potential to drop accordingly. Let's now do a worked example. Calculate the tolerable step voltage for a fault on the system lasting one second with a surface material resistivity of 3000 ohm meters and a surface layer derating factor of 0 0.7. Here's our previous equation to calculate the step voltage for someone weighing 50 kilograms, which is the worst case scenario. Putting the figures in from above, CS is the surface layer derating factor of 0 0.7. The surface material resistivity is 3000 ohms, and the fault will last for one second, which gives us a tolerable step voltage of 1577 volts. What does this mean? Well, in the next lecture, we will calculate the actual step voltage that we have for the substation we're looking at. We have to make sure that the actual step voltage is less than this value for personnel to be safe inside the substation. If we keep the other parameters the same, and vary the fault clearance time, we can see this has a significant effect on the tolerable step voltage. For 0.5 seconds, we get a value of 2,231 volts. But if we assume that all of the main protection systems have failed, and we get a fault clearance of 3 seconds, the tolerable step voltage drops all the way down to 910 volts. This makes sense. The longer a fault is applied to the human body, the more danger the person is in and the safe voltage that they can withstand will therefore reduce.